first of all, um, I want to say um, we are in unprecedented times. Um, certainly, uh, the expectation is that this particular virus is probably the most um, pronounced threat to our public health uh, since 1918. And certainly in my lifetime, there is nothing that we've experienced quite like it. Um, and I do want to address uh, how we arrived at some of the conclusions that we arrived at here recently. Um, and to say that, uh, as the manager stated a little earlier, um, the most important thing for us, I think, has to be our public health. Um, the American economy um, is important, and it, but it is a resilient, um, I won't refer to it as an institution, but it is a resilient way of life. I believe that it is the most resilient economic system in the history of the world. Uh, it has had a way of uh, rebounding from uh, recessions and depressions um, and every other uh, economic calamity that it has been faced with. And certainly, while this is a health crisis, we are reminded that our health is our greatest resource because the challenge of um, not being able to uh, execute or exercise that health in a public forum, in a public fashion, and the challenge of uh, having perhaps as many as, uh, you know, a million people faced or a million or more people uh, faced with this virus, and some are saying that up to a million with different models, we could lose a million people. Uh, and so we, we I, I say all of that to say that uh, the decision that was made on last Friday uh, certainly was the toughest decision that I've had to make uh, in my life uh, and, and, and the toughest decision that I've had to make as mayor of the city. Um, what I will say is that I was a little disappointed because I, I understood the gravity of the situation uh, and I was a little concerned because the last thing that I wanted to transpire was for the old divide to continue to raise its ugly head in our community. That divide of uh, beachside versus uh, mainland and whether or not the beachside is being given some uh, unfair advantage to the mainland. Uh, and so to Commissioner Reed's point, by every mean and by every measure, certainly if we had people who violated the itinerant vending clauses uh, that we revoked that we should do what we can to ensure that they do not have uh, the capacity to do that for at least one year. Uh, so we have to say that this was a serious uh, breach of the public trust, serious breach of the fact that this is not a right. Itinerant vending is not a right in our city. It is a privilege that we afford people because we want to give them an opportunity to make money and to thrive uh, as far as their businesses are concerned. And so the fact that it was not a right was the reason in part that it was because some of the same things that we, that we are ordering now could have been ordered at that same time. They were not ordered. But I felt as mayor of this city uh, that at some point in time when the NBA was closing, canceled or postpone their games. Our very own NASCAR started out saying that they were going to have their sporting events with no spectators. Then they canceled. At some point in time, now if we had known all of that 10 days prior, then we would have revoked and asked the Chamber of Commerce to suspend bike week at a minimum. But we didn't know that. This was a fluid situation. Um, so once those things happened, it was painfully obvious to me that we needed to take a strong step, uh, as strong a step as I thought prudent under the set of circumstances that we could take in that moment to try to discourage large groups from congregating together, therefore attempting to slow the spread of the virus. 
During the decision-making process, it must be noted that those who advised, including our city manager and city attorney, we all acknowledge that the decision could and would likely have a greater impact on those on Mary McLeod Bethune Boulevard. Because I recognize that they didn't have the uh, building capacity to harbor or hibernate and to execute uh, their businesses as people on Main Street had. They didn't have the amount of property space. Even if you extend down MMB and you go further, you'll notice that if it was on the other end, they have greater, larger lots, larger spaces that they could do things on their property that would enable them, although they are not licensed hmm. to execute in the way that the end that we use is licensed to execute. Um, they would have been more successful and easier for them to execute in the same way that Main Street did, which is all the more reason why we should send a clear message that those who violate it must be held accountable. Mm -hmm. um, now, they acknowledge that the decision was still made to move forward. It was not made lightly because I recognize that our way of life is largely governed by our ability to operate financially, to execute our businesses. Free enterprise in America is something that I take uh, uh, sincerely, and I think that our system of uh, capitalism is one that has enabled us to be the successful nation that we are. So stripping that was difficult. However, I also took into consideration the much more important reality that if the virus were to spread in our community, especially Midtown, it would also have a much greater and more devastating impact. The same way that every other scourge in American history has had a disproportionate impact on the African American community, if this virus is allowed to spread, this reality would likely also be more pronounced in 32114 zip code. The same zip code that has this commission and others working hard to bring about a health equity zone. The same community that has myself and other leaders working feverishly to bring about an educational, economic, and health renaissance. Something that we met two weeks ago or three weeks ago, presidents of universities, school superintendent, business leaders, all seeking to take the 32114 zip code and specifically create an economic enclave to try to revitalize that community. So, in a time when we must be focused on activities that protect our posterity, activities that protect our children and our elderly and most vulnerable, in an effort to mitigate the crisis for senior citizens and all others, what is certainly the greatest realistic threat of our lifetime, I think that we now have to make certain that if we do nothing else moving forward, that we maintain a unified commitment that we will together fight this scourge because it is the only way that we will come out of it whole and wholesome. So we have to do it together. So when we make these calls, it is only fair that everyone execute according to the plan of action from the governor, the president, from the county, the city, whatever those plans are, so that we're all on the same plane and that we all come out of this feeling as though we were one treated fairly but that we were on the same team. Team Daytona, Team Volusia, Team Florida, Team USA, Team World. One team, because we're in the fight of our lifetimes, period. Thank you. Do we have any other comments from you, Mr. Mayor? Thank you. Anyone else? Uh, Mayor, I'll have this executive mm -hmm. order for you to sign at the conclusion of the meeting. Okay. This meeting is adjourned. <laughs>